The United States and much of the world is starting to reopen. We have felt claustrophobic and everyone is ready to get out and get moving. But as we start interacting, what will this virus do? Am I going to get sick? Will there be a second wave of infection? People everywhere are scared. The curve is now flattened, which means that new cases will spread out over time, but they will still come. Dr. Michael Osterholm, University of Minnesota, believes that we are in the second inning of the COVID-19 crisis and that 70% of the population will get infected before we see a major reduction in transmission. That could take 12 to 24 months. I'm fine with getting a mild case of COVID-19, but I don't wanna end up on a ventilator and I don't wanna die. Seriously, how can we protect ourselves over the next one to two years as this virus continues to spread? Now, I am not an infectious disease authority, nor do I aspire to be, but let me share my perspective, what I am doing, and you are welcome to do the same. A new virus has made its debut. If you get infected, one of two things will happen. One, the virus will kill you, or two, you will kill the virus and emerge with some level of immunity. We have learned that 90% of infected individuals don't seek medical care. 50% are totally asymptomatic and 40% develop mild symptoms. Only 10% of infected individuals will present to hospital. Of those, one in four will require admission to the ICU and half of those will need a ventilator. That's 1% of the total. And even at the best centers, only half of patients that require a ventilator will survive. That means 0.5% of the total infected population dies on a ventilator. That is one in every 200 cases. That was at the beginning. Emerging therapies are improving on this. Still, it gives us a sense of proportion. For example, testing in Santa Clara, California showed that 85 times more people have been infected than originally thought. That represents spread of immunity, but it's only 4% of that population, so there's still plenty of opportunity for new cases in Santa Clara. So the virus is spreading in spite of all that we're doing and whether we like it or not. Despite the PPE and all the rules, you and I will likely get infected. We need ways to protect ourselves from developing a serious infection. So let's talk about our immune systems. The 10% of cases that present to hospital can be placed in two groups. They are either immunocompetent or immunocompromised, and obviously there is some overlap. But let's start with the immunocompetent. These folks have a strong immune system but can still die from COVID-19. Why is that? Immunocompetent individuals can fight the virus, but they get into trouble due to an exaggerated inflammatory response. Their immune systems become hyperactive. It's meant to protect you, but now it's attacking you, and we can't turn it off. We see these cases. There are children and adults in their 20s and 30s who die. Young healthcare workers are becoming sick on the job and dying. They develop rampant inflammation in the lungs, causing respiratory failure. These patients are overwhelmed by their own hyperactive immune systems. They require ventilators, not because they can't fight the infection, but because of inflammation due to their exaggerated immune response. So, what determines whether a healthy individual clears the virus at home or dies on a ventilator with severe lung inflammation? We don't know. Irregardless, the answer is controlling inflammation. And immunologists tell us that inflammation needs to be silenced as early as possible. Let's talk about the immunocompromised. The majority of cases presenting to hospital are immunocompromised. These patients try to hit back, but they can't mount an adequate immune response. They have a much harder time combating the infection. The inflammation they develop may result from a genuine immune response, but even so, it may be the inflammation as much as the virus that is responsible for their demise. Let's talk about the available therapies. When this pandemic started, we witnessed how devastating the virus could be. As a healthcare worker, I fear that I may end up in that 1% on a ventilator and eventually dying from COVID-19. I feel somewhat safer now, knowing that a number of promising therapies are in the pipeline. The first was hydroxychloroquine with azithromycin and zinc. 
This is interesting because hydroxychloroquine is a malaria drug and malaria is not a virus. Some patients clearly improve on this therapy and that may be enough to avoid or get off of a ventilator. Interestingly, the benefits of hydroxychloroquine are likely due to its anti-inflammatory properties. Another therapy is high-dose vitamin C given intravenously. Vitamin C is rapidly consumed during inflammation and replenishing vitamin C can compensate for that. This has been successful at some centers preventing the need for ventilators. And we now have remdesivir. This med was first developed to combat Ebola by inhibiting viral replication. Remdesivir is promising to reduce lung injury due to COVID-19. And let's remember, much of the lung injury is not from the virus attacking, but from an excessive immune response that won't turn off. And most recently, we have cerilumab or Kevzara. This drug reduces inflammation in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, a highly inflammatory condition. Immunologists at Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York are focused on suppressing inflammation rather than combating the virus. Immunologists agree that you need a strong immune system to fight the virus. So we want a strong immune system. That is why the immuno, that is what the immunocompromised are missing and what the, why the majority of immunocompetent individuals do just fine. For both groups and all patients, if you want to survive, stop inflammation. So if I am seriously infected, I want the latest and I want it early to smack down on any inflammation. In advance of getting infected, I am trying to stay way ahead of inflammation by taking antioxidants. This may block my inflammation, preventing lung injury that could put me on a ventilator. An aggressive supplement regimen could be the difference between mild symptoms and respiratory collapse. But why wait until you develop symptoms? Once the inflammatory cascade is set in motion, you may not be able to turn it off. I am taking my antioxidants now while I am still healthy. I want to be full of antioxidants before I get infected. I'm here to share with you what I am doing and to give you opportunity to do the same. The full panel of supplements that I am taking right now are listed below this video. Let's learn from Boris Johnson. Mr. Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of England, was a classic case of COVID-19 infection. After becoming infected, Mr. Johnson stayed at home for nearly two weeks. After two weeks at home, his inflammatory response began to escalate with rapidly progressing respiratory symptoms. He then presented to hospital and required admission to the ICU. Now, we don't know how Mr. Johnson was treated. However, therapy was enough to avoid a ventilator. Days later, after taming the inflammation, Mr. Johnson was able to leave hospital in good health. It's that late development of lung inflammation and respiratory distress that is all too common and what really scares me. You think you will be fine until you're not. Your symptoms start mild, but inflammation is building. Weeks later, it suddenly pushes you over the edge. In addition to eating foods that are high in natural antioxidants, I'm loading up on over-the-counter antioxidant and anti-inflammatory supplements. Should I become infected, hopefully this will be enough to keep me out of hospital or at least off a ventilator. Is there any proof? No. Are there any guarantees? No. Welcome to life. And you would be surprised how much of modern medicine is practiced without proof. I am only sharing with you what I am doing and the rationale behind my decisions. I'm offering you the opportunity to do the same and for the same reason, reasons if you choose. It's a handful of pills every morning. That is what I am taking right now and I plan to keep it up until this COVID-19 is completely gone. Feel free to do the same. Please discuss with your personal physician.